Hi. Hey. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you everybody who's watched our last two videos. Uh, we really appreciate all the likes, all the views, and also thank you for all the comments. It really helps the channel and we like to hear from you Nikon users just what your thoughts are. And it's nice to hear that more people are excited about the Z9 also. It's nice to know they do exist. You asked for it, we've got it. <laughs> kind of, but really. We had a couple requests for the Nikon firmware updates to do a comparison between the old Z6 version, what is it, 3.0? 3, 3.31? Yes, 3.31. Versus the new one that just came out, 3.4. Yep. Um, so supposedly the autofocus got better and that's what we're testing today. So we have a few different tests. One of them is testing the animal AF. The other ones are testing the people eye AF. Uh, we're testing a little bit of photo and video. So we'll see how those both work on those two fronts. And then we'll also give you, you know, our thoughts at the end, and then we're trying to do kind of a look at both screens so you can see what the back of the screens are doing and where the focus box is, and so where, where the software, where the firmware thinks uh, that it should be focusing. Yeah, and we tried to do real world tests, so like no lighting setup and anything, no gimbal um, mm -hmm. to help stabilize the camera. Um, so we tried to do real world tests of how you would probably run and gun shoot video or film a scene, stuff like that. Here we go. Let's take a look at some of the animal stuff. My dog, Whiskey. <laughs> he's a cute Australian Shepherd. He's almost two years old. Yeah, so he's really good at catching Frisbees. Uh, he didn't do so great in these clips, but, but uh, uh, he's when better he, than that. When he's not being filmed, he's better. He, he's camera shy, that's it. So yeah, we tried to film him catching a Frisbee to see if the camera would track him, both running towards the camera and kind of going side to side. And we did a little box routine also, um, like a, a box around the dirt, not a box on the camera. All right, so this first clip we're gonna take a look at is Whiskey catching some Frisbees. Coming at the camera. Yeah. So right off the bat, it looks like Whiskey and Mark were in focus, and then Whiskey like is pretty quick, so we ran out of frame really quickly. But it, had, yeah. it did a good job, you know, keeping up with him. Ooh, wow, that took a while to find it. Okay, there we go. Yeah. It focused on the background for a while. Yeah. Um, Whiskey's also not a high contrast dog. Uh, he's got a lot of black fur on him, especially around his face and his eyes. So there's not a lot of um, detail for the camera to pinpoint stuff. But he does have a white chest and everything. And it kind of against the green background and the sand, he stands out. So it should theoretically do fairly okay. But mm -hmm. that wasn't very great. Yeah. So let's go to the box test. So it's got Mark and Whiskey in focus pretty well. We're also pretty far away from the camera though, so. Yeah, and this is all filming on a 24-70-2.8 Z lens. And too close. Yeah. Okay. But there I got him. Yeah, he got his butt. Okay, now he's got his face, cool. And too close again, and he's gone. Um, yeah, so you also got to remember the limits of whatever lens you're shooting on uh, the minimum focus distance because obviously if it gets too close it won't focus but yeah. they found it pretty quickly as soon as he moves far enough back. And now we're going to switch over to the 3.40 new firmware. So here's that frisbee test again. Oh, that's not bad. It keeps whiskey in focus most of the way. Except, Except when he jumps. Yeah. But you can see Mark and Whiskey are on our different planes, and Whiskey's clearly in focus, and Mark's out of focus. Yeah. So that's good. What about the box that's test? Nice. nice. That looks pretty sharp on him. Yeah. He's not looking at the camera, though. Yeah. I also noticed while we were filming all these, it wasn't really finding his eye. It was more finding his body and head. So we had a lot of focus points. And this was all on Animal AF, so this was there were a lot of focus points of those red moving boxes on his body. And when Whiskey got close enough to be recognized, I saw the yellow box appear around his head. Hmm. Yeah. It's hunting around a little bit. I don't know, I don't really notice any difference between the update and the old version for yeah. video. 
on animal. Yeah, it looks like there's a marginal difference for video on animal. Um, so, you know, they might not even touch that, and which I don't think they touched that in the, in the firmware notes that they published when the firmware update came about. Yeah, we thought we'd just test it anyway, though, just to see if it somehow got a little bit better. But it's about the same. Yeah. So that was your action sports version. Okay, and next up, we have Mark walking towards the camera. Now, this is with people I focus on. And this is video, and this is where we got a little bit more of the back of the cameras for you guys. So we'll be switching off between the footage of the Z6s and the back of their screens. Yeah, good. I'd say that tracked you really well, and that was even the old firmware. That was the old one, yeah. Okay. So now let's take a look at 3.4 firmware. It's about the same, but I'm also moving slow. I think we just try to do a normal walk test just to see how it is tracking a subject coming towards the camera. And, you know, it seems like they both did fairly well. I didn't really see any differences they, in both firmwares. They did a good job keeping up with Mark and then they kept it in focus from the back to the front. And, you know, even as when he starts sitting down, He's clearly in focus and you got some nice depth of field going there with the 2.8. On to a little bit of a trickier test. I tried to trick the camera a bit just to see what it would do and how well it would focus. So here's the back of the cameras for these two. Yeah, this one's interesting. Okay, so it looked like version 3.31, the old firmware, did a better job tracking my head and my face. And then on the new firmware 3.4, it seemed like it just kind of jumped around a little bit and it even lost my head when I got into more contrasty areas, especially in that back area where it seems like it's blown out. Yeah, well, they also said the refresh rate, uh, there's an increased refresh rate on the update to 3.40. So that could be why it was jumping around a lot when it lost you because it was kind of freaking out trying to find where you went. Um, so that makes sense why it would jump around a little bit more. I'd say the 3.31 did do better, but you'll find out later that it really doesn't matter. So then we tried to shoot like a real world kind of thing where I'm following Landon if, as if he was coming into the scene and then going to pet whiskey and then goes it down. Um, so both this wasn't an exact side-by-side -side test because obviously I'm only one camera operator. So, but we tried to repeat the same exact, same exact thing and we got pretty close. This is where we kind of noticed a big difference, which is an improvement. That is this one right here. Yeah. Okay. So this is the first one, 3.31 version. Found him pretty quick, staying on him still. Whiskey's not paying attention. Oh, yeah, good. So I tried to put his head at the extreme at the top of the frame to see if it would lose him at all. Um, and then also as I was coming down in front of the lantern, I was trying to distract the camera to see if it would jump to the lantern instead that was um, in the foreground. Uh, but it stayed on his face, which is good. And I didn't really jump to whiskey either. So it knew to stick to uh, human faces. Good test. So I like that the old one works not that bad. Yeah. Works pretty well. And then this is the same test, firmware version 3.40. So right there we noticed something. Staying on Landon pretty well. Even when your head like tilts back and your chin is facing the camera instead, it still stayed on you. It didn't lose focus and then had to refind it. Uh, same thing. Yeah, same thing there. Even when he's licking your face, it's still uh, focusing on your face instead. Even when your eyes are kind of at the extreme, almost gone. Yeah, I think it did a really good job. It looks like it found me a lot faster in the new firmware, 3.40. And then, like Mark was saying, it stuck with... If it couldn't find my eye, it mostly stuck with the face and just kept the face in focus, you know, parts of my chin, um, especially when I'm lifting my head up with whiskey. And then we also did kind of some similar shots where I'm panning the camera around Landon, circling around him sitting at a table, and we put some plants and stuff in the foreground to kind of trick the camera again to see how it did with that. 
and I tried to keep the same distance between Landon. Again, I'm not on a gimbal because I was trying to see how well it did trying to stabilize itself, the internal stabilization and focus at the same time. And it did, it did pretty well. In the beginning, when you first start the clip and you start moving, it's focused on the closest object and then it found Landon, which was good. Yeah, it still looked like it, it took a while to find my face when you were going between the object, the lantern, and the orchid. Yeah, but that's, again, that's without selecting on screen what to focus on. So I was just trying to see if the camera was smart enough to know to go to his face. Um, mm -hmm. and eventually caught up. <laughs> I mean, there's ways around it, obviously. Just click on the face to track that instead. But yeah, it did about the same, I'd say. Or it did about the same as the previous test of me following him into the scene. So I'd say it's usable. Any improvement is still an improvement. So we do appreciate kind of the stuff, the little incremental firmware updates. Right? Yeah. So what we did notice a big difference was, so the video saw a minimal difference, minimal upgrade. We noticed it because it seemed to lock onto Landon a lot faster when he came into frame. Landon, you noticed a bigger difference when you were doing photos, right? Yeah, it seemed like there was a lot more of an improvement, um, especially when they were saying that they updated the refresh rate of the focus boxes on the back of the screen. And so also anecdotally, I took this to a wedding over the weekend and with the new firmware 3.40, and it seemed to track faces and find faces a lot easier. And usually I use the Z6 as my B cam, and it seemed to do really well in that kind of wedding scenario, finding faces and keeping them locked. So we'll show a few of the photos and then we'll go show the back of the screen just so you can see how quickly the focus box is finding the subject. So with the old firmware, I took 46 images, and these are all just straight out of camera JPEGs. So it lost me when I went down to the ground and my face was looking down. Uh, I was a little bit out of focus. That could also be motion blur too though. A little fuzzy on the way back up. And then it did lose your face when you turned away. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that was the old one. Yeah. And now let's take a look at the new firmware 3.40. And I took about 38 images. So I'll do the same thing as I did with the old firmware. So you can kind of see where it finds Mark and where it kind of loses him. If that right. one's already focused. Yeah. I think within the first one, it was already focused. Yeah. See on the way down. Nice. This is where it lost Mark when he turned his face away. But on the old one. On the old one. And with the new firmware, it seemed to keep him in focus a lot easier. Yeah. So as you can kind of see, it looks like it does a lot better in photos. And so I think the firmware was really an update for photos rather than for video. And we even have some clips. I tried to do some shots of me holding the Z6 with our with another camera so I can film the back of the screen as I'm kind of doing that tracking with Mark. So it kind of looks like this a little bit. <laughs> a little janky. <laughs> That's the only way to get it without using our Atomos screen. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, so let's look at the old one first. So it's mostly right there, relying on the um, face detect, the big box. Now it's on my eye, goes back to face when I'm looking down and going up. Turning away, it's still on the face box. Uh... It's on the face box now, still. Yeah, so when I'm further away from the camera, it looks like it's just kind of giving up on eye detect and using the face box. So what about the new one? I think the new one definitely relied more on eye detect. Yeah, it finds your eye right away. Yeah. Even when I went down to the ground. And back up on face for a little second now I turn toward the camera now it's back on eye face and then it goes to eye oh face again oh eye again so when you have a clear picture of the eyes even when you're further back further upstage in the shot it did find the eye and still use the eye whereas the previous version the old version it was just like oh no I'm gonna use face box instead <laughs> so so that's good Kind of just like in the Z9, it looks like there is a bit of a hierarchy. So like Mark was saying, when it can't find the eye, it'll resort to face. And this is a new firmware update. But when it can find the eye, 
it'll go to the smallest box and find the eye. So I think what we're seeing is a little bit more of a trickle down technology in that it seems like we're pushing the limit of the hardware of the Z6 in the, in the software. And so we're getting a little bit of that trickle down technology from the Z9 down to the Z6 and mm -hmm. Z7. I do think that we're, as far as the Z6, the Mark 1s, um, I think we're kind of getting to the limits of the updates that they can do when you get to the point where it's not a software issue anymore and just a hardware issue. Because the Z9 is going to have a the faster, what is it, X-Speed 7 now. Yeah. So at some point, we're getting these smaller incremental improvements for the Z6, but it's like whatever that mathematical theory is that you can get approach zero, but never get to zero exactly. So we're never going to get to like a brick wall, I don't think. But the upgrades are just going to keep getting probably a little bit more minimal, a little more, more minimal, less noticeable. This one's still noticeable, I think. So it's still, it's still a good improvement. So now I got to update mine. <laughs> yeah, you do. And those are our thoughts on the new firmware update. We're glad to see that Nikon is still supporting their first generation mirrorless cameras. <laughs> So that's a really good sign. <laughs> it's the only one I have. <laughs> but don't leave me behind. <laughs> yeah, but that makes me a little bit more confident that, you know, Nikon is still supporting these old cameras that are like three years old. And so, you know, they're still trying to push that technology into, you know, its best possible form, especially because there's still a ton of Z6 and Z7 users out there. Yeah. And, you know, it feels nice that they're not forgetting about those people. And it's also nice because we're seeing, I feel like we're seeing that technology from the Z9 and Mark and I are really excited to see what Nikon brings for the Mark IIs of the Z line. And then after that, well, Mark doesn't have I Z2s, don't have one. But I do, so I'm excited to see what, what they bring. I guess so. <laughs> but this also means we're going to see bigger improvements with new hardware. So when the Z6 and Z7 III come out, I expect those to be a lot closer to what the Z9 might be capable of. I think that's it for this video. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Probably do some... Take a break from Nikon for a second, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. Let us know what else you want to see. Because this one was yeah. suggested by you. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know because... Should I up update? Oh, okay, whatever. The answer is yes. Update. Update whenever you can. So. Thank you everybody for watching. We really appreciate it. We'll see you in the comments. Bye. Bye. And I haven't told you this, Mark, but I have a little mini announcement. <laughs> Did you? I. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I pre-ordered the Nikon Z9 at a local camera store, uh, and hopefully we'll see what happens. <laughs> Maybe we'll right. spit out. <laughs> Whatever. No, no, it's fine. That's good. I mean, of the two of us, I knew Landon was definitely going to get it first, because yeah. I just don't want to buy another camera. Yeah. Well, <laughs> also, Nikon, send us one. <laughs> just kidding. It's okay. <laughs>